He's best known for his roles as Gimli the Dwarf in the Lord of the Rings trilogy and Sala in the Raiders of the Lost Ark. But he's now starring in a new film, a documentary about the life of St. Patrick. With St. Patrick's Day right around the corner, he's here to tell us all about it. His new film, I Am Patrick, the Patron Saint of Ireland, which opens in theaters in two days on March, uh, uh, for two days rather, on March 17th and 18th. Please welcome the great John Reese Davies, who joins us via Skype. Thank you for being with us. Lovely to be with you. Look, now, uh, I Am Patrick is based uh, solely on the saints' writings. There's nothing in the film about the legends of driving snakes out of Ireland or using the shamrock to teach the Irish people about the Holy Trinity. What were you most surprised to learn about St. Patrick while making the film? Uh, well, it just reinforced my opinion that he... I mean, he is the most human of the saints that I know. Hmm. Uh, and, 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 and he is that original, authentic voice coming out of an, an age that has no, has no autobiography at all. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and his experience as a slave, um, people, men's experiences of slavery is, it, is all different. Some are crushed, some like, um, uh, Jean de Vallette, the great defender of Malta in, in, in the great seas of Malta, mm -hmm. you know, spends, what, seven or nine years as a slave in the galleys mm -hmm. and comes back with his resolve to keep fighting, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, uh, alive and driving him all his life. Uh -huh. I, suppose, I, suppose, I suppose there's that in, 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 in common with, with Patrick. But yeah. Patrick's extraordinary circle for being a privileged... Romano-British youth in, in an area that we would call Wales, but mm -hmm. may have been Cum Cumbria, um, you know, from being privileged for owning slaves to being a slave himself mm. and escaping. Uh, I mean, slave. one of the glories of Christian civilization is the abolition of slavery. Yeah. And, and, uh, and, and never let us forget that that is one of our civilization of the world's great glories. Mm -hmm. uh, now, John, uh, the, I want to talk about the film for a moment because it uses historical reenactments, expert interviews, uh, and, and your performance to tell uh, the story of St. Patrick. You play the older version of the saint, uh, reflecting back on his life as a slave and eventually evangelizing the pagans. I want to show folks what we're talking about. Here's a little clip. Christ the Lord told me to come here to be with these people for the rest of my life. The preconception that we've got about St. Patrick is completely wrong. It is slavery for life. John, how did you prepare for this role? Well, I, I, I obviously, um, I... I I've been a history buff all my life. I know roughly the period, uh, and uh, I, 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 you just pick up the confessions, uh -huh. and and the the man talks straight to you, and 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 what I love, what what is so human about Patrick is that from you those lonely, desperate, savage years of uh, being a shepherd. Mm -hmm. there, there, there has been no company except that the, except he has discovered that he can talk to God and God talks back to him. Mm -hmm. And this gives him a singleness of purpose, which is uh, which is extraordinary. But that but he keeps listening to that voice mm -hmm. all his life. Mm -hmm. And and it reminds him that he has been nothing and God listened. Mm -hmm. And and that he is nothing, hmm. and, but he is doing God's will. I mean, that extraordinary opening, I am Patrick. Yeah. I am a sinner. Hmm. Uh, I mean, it's an, it's an extraordinary opening to begin with. Um, but but the, 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 the great thing is that that singleness of purpose, uh, which drives him forward, uh, is coupled with this 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 self-awareness that he is nothing, that he is humble, and that he has to have true humility. 
Mm. And and yet he's a humor at the same time when he's accused of 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 um, accumulating uh, rights and privileges and respect, and his ego is getting big, and and he's taking money from gift from from worshippers that should be going to the church. You know, he is outraged at this. You know how the you know you can you can sense the man sort of saying, well, of course I took these gifts. You know, how do you think I'm, I'm feeding the people I'm training to be the new missionaries? How do you think I'm actually being able to give presents, uh, you, you know, to the kings here, the tribal leaders here, in order to break into their society so they can start to listen to me? Uh, it's and you feel that 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 anger. And no, I must not be angry. I must no, no. I I for, I for, I forgive those who do me injury like this, but I. But you sense, but I'd like to punch them. Uh, <laughs> yeah. there's, That's, there's that tension throughout the confessions, and, and, and you bring that to the performance. Now, you graduated from London's Royal Academy of Dramatic Art, John, and uh, you were the only actor to star in the James Bond, Indiana Jones, and Lord of the Ring franchises. How did you know acting was your calling? When did you know? Well, it wasn't my calling. My calling was to be a writer. I was 11 years old. I was a lonely, unhappy little boy in boarding school. Hmm. And we, we had a great tradition of doing a great play once a year. And the first play I ever saw at the age of 11 was Oedipus Rex. Hmm. And when Oedipus comes on in that beginning of that second act with, 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 with his eyeballs hanging down uh. his face, uh, I mean... I knew then exactly what I, afterwards I went and went into the senior library, which I wasn't allowed in, and yeah. found Aristotle on tragedy and learnt that great passage on tragedy. But, but that was the moment when I saw what was meant by through pity and fear uh. affecting its purgation of these emotions. Yeah. Um, wonderful. And, and, uh, and that was the moment I decided that I would be the new Sophocles or William Shakespeare, um, <laughs> that you would now be talking to me about. Um, <laughs> didn't quite work out that way yet. Well, <laughs> you, it, you, you've found a better way to reach people, and certainly you've meet, reached millions and millions. Now, you say you've lost, I've read some interviews where you say you've lost friends in Hollywood over your political views. Has Hollywood lost its moral compass? Well, uh, moral... Uh, <laughs> Uh, Hollywood exists to make money by entertaining. Um, that, that's really the extent of its moral mm -hmm. compass. Sometimes it it can be enlisted to something like a war effort or something like that. Mm -hmm. But um, it, uh, Hollywood is is about fantasy and dream, and, and it, it you know if you used moral compass, they they would. Uh, <laughs> they would somewhat sort of shake shake their heads in bewilderment, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Compass, where, where do you want to go? We've got oh. GPS these days. Right. Uh, um, <laughs> well, have they lost their moral GPS? It seems there's there. It's a very monolithic town. They don't tolerate a diversity of viewpoints, politically no, they or don't. otherwise. No, no, they don't. And 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 there is a real terror. Uh, of uh, of appearing to be less than what the what what the liberal establishment uh, um, want you to be. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there is really there's really no truth. Um, uh, there's no no respect at all for diversity of opinion or even a mm -hmm. quibble about uh, you know the the science behind something, the rationality behind something. You know, there is there is something that is self-evidently true, and good and virtuous. And uh, if you don't understand it, well, do we really want you to work at all? Because we don't, don't want dissent. Mm -hmm. However, that's over that's overstating it because mm -hmm. uh, um, because there are always different people there, mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, and there are some great and really good people. Uh, John, yeah, before I let you go, uh, we, we just did an interview about the Nigerian uh, genocide, what's happening in Nigeria. You, I know, have voiced concern about uh, the Christianity in the Middle East and Africa being wiped out 
and not just ideologically, but physically. Why do you believe the world is so passive? And what might this film on Patrick remind us of? I mean, a lot of people don't even realize he was a slave. That's right. Uh, throughout my... I grew up in Africa. I spent a lot of time in Africa. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I'm one of the few people, actually, who you'll ever talk to who saw a slave ship. Oh. My father was a policeman. He came, one, came home one lunch. He was very quiet. And afterwards, he said, get in the car. I want to show you something. Hmm. And he took me down to the port, the dockside in Dar es Salaam. And he pointed out an Arab dhow. And he said, twice a year, that, that dhow there comes down from Saudi Arabia, stops in Aden, goes down the Somali coast. On the way down, it's got machine parts and sewing machines and cloths and stuff hmm. like that. It stops here, goes on to Baira in Mozambique. Hmm. But on the way back up, it's always got two or three little black boys. And they are slaves going back to Saudi Arabia. Hmm. And the United Nations will not allow me to do anything about it. That was 1955, probably, wow. probably August, September 1955. Uh, Saudi Arabia didn't officially abolish slavery for another 10 years. Hmm. Um, so I, I had that particular bee in my bonnet. Hmm. As for hmm. Christians, I, this, the, the, because we want to be fair to people, when something bad happens to one group or our group or nominally our group, well, we say that's really bad, but, but you know, of course, you know, we have done bad things as well. Huh. And there's this great, great need for equivalence. Hmm. Uh, you know, all religions really are equal, they're equally bad, aren't they, really? I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, just think of the things that, you know, the Christians did in, mm -hmm. you know, in, in the Crusades and stuff like that. Well, mm -hmm. And it, it's nonsense. You have to treat all acts of horror with the same, the same moral indignation you can. Mm -hmm. But Africa is, a, Africa is a place of horror. Uh, I mean, I, I love Africa. I grew up there. It's changing fast. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, nobody said anything about the two million Christians who were put to death in the Sudan no. uh, in, in the 60s. Uh, the, the, um, you know, I, I was in Dubai about a week ago, which is why I am self, uh, uh, confining myself and isolating yeah. myself at the moment. It's extraordinary there that the man, uh, in, in the, 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 the Sultan, uh, the Sheikh in Dubai, he is actually allowing a Hindu temple to be built. He is tolerating an extraordinary amount of, of, of individual worship of Christianity and stuff like that. Huh. There, are, there are people really working, you know, to try and, to ri to try and level up society mm. and to, and, and to in, in institute some sort of equality. And it takes a great deal of courage to do that. Mm. But, you know, but we are... You know, if we, if we do not speak up, um, more people will be lost. And if we do speak up, then we will be condemned as being partisan uh, and, and illiberal. And, um, and besides, isn't the idea of God itself so antiquated? I mean, mm. you know, really, do we, do we need God? Mm. I mean, we can live perfectly moral lives without God and, and religion, can't we? Well, um, you know, I, freedom freedom of, of of worship is one thing, but if you start worshiping Satan uh, in the most literal and absurd sort of way that is happening in the United States like that, you will create a measure of misery that will just encompass those around you. John Reese Davies, uh, we could talk all day. Uh, you're spoken like St. Patrick himself, I might add. I am Patrick, the patron saint of Ireland, opens in select theaters for two days only, March 17th and 18th. Find out more at Patrick or IamPatrick.com. John Reese Davies, thank you for being with us. Well, I hope you get to the cinema in those two days. And bless you all, and uh, forgive me for babbling. You were excellent. Thank you. Thank you.